Hello dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between, and welcome to How to Do Everything So You Don't Have To. I am your host, Jesse Kester, and I used to be of the mind that the best way to check your audio chain was to give it a listen, but after spending some time with spectral frequency analysis tools, I am convinced that the best way to listen to your audio is to look at it. Let's get right into it so that you can get back to making fantastic audio recordings. There are going to be two main parts to this video. The first is an explanation of what spectral frequency analysis tools are, and the second part is going to be feeding an audio signal through a very long and winding chain with record points at each point in that chain, and then we're going to compare the audio as it moves through that chain, and we're going to take a look at how the signal degrades from device to device. Let's get into spectral frequency analysis tools, and to do that, we're going to have to switch over to Adobe Audition. We've already got an audio file loaded in Audition, and that file is broken down into two parts. The first part is a series of single frequency tones played in succession, and the second part is a bit of dialogue from a movie. The first thing you'll notice about a waveform readout is that when we are fully zoomed out like this, it is incredibly low fidelity. What I mean by that is we've got six different tones played at six different frequencies, but they're all being played at the same volume. So when we're zoomed out, they all look identical. If we were to zoom in, you'd see that we've got our 200 hertz tone, and going to the right, we've got our 500 hertz tone, 1000 hertz, 2000, 5000, and 10,000 hertz tones. But when we're zoomed out, they all look identical. And there's a similar dearth of information regarding the dialogue from the movie. And the reason that is, is that audio waveforms waste a lot of space in their readout. So the only information we have about this file is along this green line. And that means that at any given moment, 99% of the screen is wasted space. That is not the case with spectral frequency analysis. To see those tools, you can either click on this icon up here, or you can grab this handle and drag up. And straight away, we are revealing so much more information about the audio. Now, whatever is dark has very little or no signal information. Whatever is light has a lot of signal information. So you can see our tones. Here's 200, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, and 10,000. And it's very clearly delineated which tone is playing at which moment. However far we zoom out or zoom in, it's very clear what's being played and when. And over here in the dialogue, we already have some pretty good hints about what this dialogue will be. It seems to be occupying the lower frequency, so we can imagine that this is a male's voice, but we have a couple of pops over here, and we can assume that those are probably S's. Let's give that audio a listen, and it will confirm exactly what I am predicting. I'm a family man. I run a family business. This is my son and my partner, H.W. Plainview. So what we've got there is business, this is son, and then over here we have H. So you see that business, this is son, all those S's occupy the same range in his voice, and the H over here is a little bit lower frequency than his S's. We've learned all that just from one quick glance at this audio, and that is why spectral frequency analysis tools are so incredibly valuable when you are evaluating your audio chain. Let's do exactly that right now, and to evaluate our audio chain, I'm going to show it to you. Welcome to my desk. So what we're going to do is play a single piece of audio and move it through a very long and winding sound chain, and we're going to record at every stop along that chain. Then we can take those recordings into Adobe Audition and compare them using spectral frequency analysis, and we'll see how the signal degraded as it moved through the chain. This chain will start at the iPad, and that goes out from the iPad into the L20 via RCA. We are recording at the L20 level, and then we're outputting via 25 feet of headphone cable, and that travels into the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. Now, I do realize that XLR out from the board into the Blackmagic would send a much cleaner signal. In fact, we tried that first, and the signal was so clean it wasn't really useful for demonstrating signal degradation. So we switched over to the much less reliable, unbalanced 25 feet of headphone cable. 
That signal leaves the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K after being recorded there and travels via HDMI into the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO where we are also recording. It then leaves the ATEM via USB-C and travels into Logic Pro where we are recording. We're not just recording, we are also letting that sound play out of our computer speakers and we have a cheap little cassette recorder with an onboard microphone in front of those speakers and this will be recording the final stage of that signal. Now this is a DFD build. This is designed for dumbness. We are trying to create the worst audio we possibly can and that seemed like a good method for doing exactly that. So let's play back that file and then we will check those recordings. I'm a family man. I run a family business. This is my son and my partner, H.W. Plainview. We are back in Audition and we've got all of our audio files loaded. The first thing you'll notice is that the word reference has way too many E's in it. I think a big problem is that there's an F sandwiched between two E's right at the beginning. So you get E fatigue before you're even halfway through all of the E's in that word. Let's look at our files. So the reference file looks like this, and we are not expecting much distortion as we move from the iPad to the L20 over the RCA cables. And when we load the L20 file, what we see is that there is not much of a change in signal. When we moved from the L20 to the Blackmagic, we are expecting a large change in signal quality because we're traveling over 25 feet of unbalanced headphone cable. So that should reveal some signal degradation. Let's load that file now. You will notice that there is signal degradation on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. We've got these test tones, and you'll notice that there is an echo of the test tone at double its frequency. So this is a 500 hertz tone, and here's an echo at 1000 hertz. 1000 hertz tone, here's an echo at 2000 hertz. 2000 hertz tone, here's an echo at 4000. You got a 5000 hertz tone, and there is an echo at 10,000. The other thing you'll notice is that there is less information in the movie dialogue. So let's look at the L20 and you'll see that it's a little bit louder in this area, but when we load the black magic, that area goes darker and that means that we have lost some of the signal strength. Let's move from the black magic to the ATEM and this is being transported over HDMI, so we should expect no new noise to be added to that signal as we get to the ATEM. And when we load it up, we have nearly identical files. And that's exactly what we would expect. Now for the biggest surprise of this test, and that is looking at the logic file, we thought that once it left the ATEM over USB-C, there would be no new noise introduced. But when we load that logic file, we are getting horrendous echoing at the 10,000 hertz tone. We've also got some really bad echoing happening at 5,000 hertz, but that echo at the 10,000 hertz tone is simply unacceptable and why we are very happy to record directly to the Zoom L20 or to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K and not to Logic. This is completely unacceptable and we need to do more testing to figure out how to cure that. Finally, we're gonna look at the tape and this is designed for dumbness. This is a complete mess. You can see that it retains all of the noise that we introduced at the logic level. So you can barely poking through, you can see some of those echoes of distortion that were created at the logic level, but we've got huge new bands of distortion everywhere and we've just got the tape hiss that would make anybody cry. Because I'm a super duper fun guy who really enjoys partying, we're going to close out this video by playing the original reference file back to back with that final audio cassette recording. While this is happening, that's a perfect time to consider subscribing or liking this video. And if you found this video to be incomplete, please leave a comment below telling us where we missed the mark. Or, or you could just get back to making amazing audio recordings. I'm a family man. I run a family business. This is my son and my partner, H.W. Plainview. I'm a family man. I run a family business. This is my son and my partner, H.W. Plainview.